Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Sherdog.com betting show. And it is Bellator 271 and UFC Fight Night Holloway versus Rodriguez this weekend with uh, with lots of great fights on them and lots of close fights as well. So um, looking at the betting odds, I'm not sure it's the best week in the world for betting. But it is if you can pick the right ones. And that's what we're here to try to do. We're trying to give you a bit of advice. You can either look at my advice and take it. Or look at my advice and go, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And take the exact opposite. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to, I'm here to help people out uh, in, in either way. Before I start, please bet responsibly. Only bet what you can bet. Or even half of that or even less. Please be careful with it. It's a very serious thing. Um, I am not a betting expert. I'm not going to be here talking about units and... You know, put 1.5 units on this and three. Uh, that's not me. I'm MMA. Have, you know, a tenner at the end of the week. You put a fiver on fucking, I don't know, a knockout in the uh, the, the billet fight at the weekend of Volante and it was even money and you double. That's the kind of thing I do, right? Not, not this big betting expert. I'm here to talk about MMA, looking at an MMA fan's point of view and maybe putting on a few bets, not a betting person's point of view and getting into MMA to make money like that that's not me at all so uh we're going to talk mostly about MMA here and the few bets that I think might be good for this one and I'm going to start it right off here immediately actually last week as well out of the four bets two of them came up and then the, the flyer didn't happen but what did so the flyer is going it's going to happen one of the day. actually it happened two weeks ago didn't it yeah the, the Clarissa Shields uh, Montez fight it happened in that one but uh yeah the flyer's gonna the flyer if the flyer comes off every once every three weeks, I think that's that's pretty good going because it is it's a big one. It's a big one every week. So um we will get to that last as always. But first of all, let's start off, I suppose, in the in the uh, the main event of the uh, the UFC this weekend, and that's Max Holloway versus Jair Rodriguez. Um and I was look, Max Holloway is a, an absolutely huge favourite uh in this one. I just pulling up his price here. He is minus seven hundred in some places. Um, a little minus 720 in other places, absolutely a huge favorite. So, to look at Max Oliver straight up, I don't think is, is worth it to be honest. Now, if you want to look at Yair Rodriguez, he's one of the flyers of the weekend, he's mine or he's plus 500 here in some places, a little bit lower than others. <clears throat> I, I don't think that's a bad flyer at all. If you think you know Yair has it and this is his time, and all now, I'm 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 picking Holloway, so my bet in this. Uh, is Max Holloway inside the distance, and that is plus 130. So Max Holloway's been by, you know, submission, disqualification, uh, knockout, whatever it might be, uh, plus 130. And the reason I've gone for that is I was looking <laughs> I was looking at Holloway by decision, and it's a little bit less. I look around the same. <clears throat> I think it's plus 110, plus 115-ish. Um, and it was that, and it was... I was looking at the under for 4.5 rounds. That's around the same as well, even a little bit less. I think I think that's plus 100. So it was that was my choice here to pick one of those bets because I want I really wanted to get a bet from this. I think Max Holloway is going to win. And the reason I kind of <clears throat> I overlapped my other thinking with going for inside the distance is I just think Max Holloway in his last few fights and the fights that are maybe not um uh, you know the the big title fights with him defending or him coming back. You know fighting uh, fighting against um, uh, against Volkanovski. I think look he, he has a point to prove in all of those fights, but he really has a point to prove in the kind of the non-title fights. If you want know, non-title fights, it's a non-title fight. He really has a point to prove in that, and I feel like against Yaya Rodriguez, most people would go out there and attempt to stay safe against Yair and outpoint him if you can outpoint him, you know, if you have a good enough strategy to outpoint Yair Rodriguez, similar to, you know, because, and the reason I said it is because Yair is kind of a, a testing technical matchup, like a Wonder Boy or something like that, not a, not the same style as Wonder Boy, but you get what I mean, you know, usually you would stay safe against those guys. That's not Max Holloway, though. You know, he is not one of those guys. Max Holloway is a guy that will put on the pace, will keep going forward, will keep uh, looking for the finish at all times because he doesn't care as much about results, but the results follow. But he cares more about being a non-stop animal. You know, that's what he cares about. That's what Max Holloway is at the crux of it he's a fantastic fighter and that's why i think this fight will get to maybe the third fourth round um 
Holloway will be winning and then he will up the pace and he will, you know, take the fight from Yair Rodriguez. Now, that's a difficult thing to do. We saw against Chan Sung Jung, he won in the last second of the last round, Yair. So he's live and Yair is a dangerous fighter as well, you know. If I woke up and on Sunday morning, Yair Rodriguez had won by KO, I'd probably be shocked, but I wouldn't be as shocked, you know, as, as maybe we should be because Yair is a... Yair is a dangerous fighter and he can, there's ways for him to win this fight. But I think Max Holloway, uh, I think minus 700 is a bit steep, to be honest. I would I would probably minus 500, minus 400, to be honest. So that price is just uh, way, I, I think that's too much. But, um, and, and that's out of respect to Yair Rodriguez. I have huge respect for, for Max Holloway and he's a he's a great fighter and look, deserves to be a big favourite in, uh, in most fights he fights. But um, yeah, I think that bet, Holloway inside the distance uh, at a, a plus 130. I, I like that. And that's the one that really, you know, I wouldn't say it stood out, but it was one that when I had a choice of a few, that was the one that went. I, I, look, I, I just think it's it's his volume more than anything else, really. I just think that when he, if he, look, if he starts to land on Yair, and if he continues to land on Yair with that volume, it'll add up and add up and add up and add up and add up. And at a certain point, Yair Rodriguez will have taken so many shots that he probably won't be able to take any more. And that's kind of what, I, literally what I'm betting on here. So uh, Holloway, inside the distance, plus 130. Now, the next one I'm going for uh, is... Maybe one that not everyone would go for, but I have a, I have a kind of a soft spot uh, for this guy, and this is uh, this is Joel Alvarez uh, against Thiago Moises, and I'm going for Alvarez at plus two ten. Now, when I, I I usually when I go off the best fight odds or wherever I might go, and I scroll down through the prices, I look for ones that kind of stand out. First of all, look, give me an easy bet, and I'll take it, no problem at all. And when I saw Joel Alvarez at plus two ten, you know. Having won, I think he's won his last three in a row. He's beaten um, Joseph Duffy, my countryman here. And I've kind of kept an eye on him more so after that. And, and obviously, I haven't watched him going into that. And I think he's a very, very impressive fighter. Mike is a very good fighter as well. You know, he's beaten the likes of Bobby Green and, and others as well. Uh, lost uh, Makachev last time out, if I'm not mistaken. But I, I feel like this is a relatively even fight in the making. But I just think, look, I went and looked at their stats, right? And the big difference here and the reason why that, that price stood out to me, first of all, and the reason why I've gone with it is because I think that Joel Alvarez is very good at using his lint, very good at using his sizes, good jab, good shots in the feet, kicks well. And he's six foot three. Tiago Moises, I think it was five foot nine. That's a big, big difference for a guy in the favor of a guy who uses that size very well and to be plus 210 to do that i i like that i really like that now moises is good you know he's good everywhere he's good powerful shots good takedown his jiu-jitsu is unbelievable obviously um but i i just i fancy alvarez here i, I would take him probably at even money here to to win uh and at plus 210 i really like that you know i really really like that prize I believe in his skill set. Maybe he's a guy that doesn't have, you know, the the sexy name like like others coming through and 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 winning fights. No, you know, Mice is a good fighter as well. Don't get me wrong, absolutely here. But I uh, I have a bit of a soft spot for Joel Alvarez, and when you give me that price in him, uh, I'm gonna take it. So yeah, that's that's straight up, and it's based on that alone, based on his lint and his use of lint alone against someone so small. Um, and being a little bit underrated. I really do think he's a little bit underrated. And uh, plus 210, I'll take that. Now, maybe I'll be wrong. You know, maybe I'm wrong. But at that price, I think it's uh, it's worth trying to be wrong at that price. So I'll, I'll go for that one. Um, right, my next bet is uh, Bellator. And I'm going for Tyrell Fortune to beat Linton Vassell. And that is at minus 175. Um... I think that's a good price, to be honest. I think, you know, I was expecting this to be way wider. I was expecting maybe minus 300, maybe minus 350. Having, obviously, my, um, by the time this is out, I'm sure my uh, my Bellator preview will be out as well. Uh, and went back and watched a good bit of, of both of them. And, you know, we've seen Linton Vassell. He's been around for a long time. You could, look, you couldn't rule him out of, of any fight against any Bellator heavyweight, maybe apart from the, the very top one or two. Um, and look, don't get me wrong, Fortune has, has kind of found ways to lose in the past. I think he's only, what is the only last one fight? If I, I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, look, 
he is I wouldn't say Fortune is the best fighter in the world <clears throat> but what he is is um athletic fast and can get inside very well right and I think against someone like Linton Vassell who okay is for for a heavyweight now having coming up from from light heavyweight he's he's long and he's more athletic maybe than most guys you'd find there he's also kind of getting on a little bit you know and uh he's maybe not what he used to be in terms of uh in terms of youth i'll sound like fucking mike goldberg here now <laughs> he's not as young as he used to be but uh yeah i i just think fortune's takedowns will be uh will be a key here over three rounds as well he only needs maybe one or two to secure this fight um, and I think he will. I think he'll do enough. I think Vassell, I, I look, I think Fortune will be very, very smart in the use of his range and not letting Vassell use his. And, and by that I mean, I think his use of speed against Vassell's use of range will be in the key here. I think if Vassell can keep him at the end of the jab and jab him up, I think if Fort, he'll, he'll, you know, it'll be good for him. I think Fortune can kind of stay all the way outside of that jab, don't get hit by it, and then find ways of getting inside, whether it's with takedowns or maybe shots to the body or or, uh, or big overhands as you kind of dip in low and come in over the top. I think that's, uh, uh, that's a real key for him to win here, and I think he can do that, to be honest. Um, and he's a, look, he's a worthy favourite here. Minus 175, I think that's a pretty good price, to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, Tyrell Fortune, definitely... Definitely one of my bets here um, on uh, on, a, on a pretty um, pretty good Bellator card altogether. Now, my flyer is also on the Bellator card. I'll come to that in a second. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the rest of the Bellator card with that as well. But my, my fourth bet uh, for the evening on, uh, on Friday slash Saturday is Andrea Lee. And she is plus 110 to beat Siltony Calvillo. Uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Calvillo. Um, lots of my picks, I think, are very, are very similar this week, and for for lots of different re for the, lots of the same reasons. I just think maybe her boxing is a little bit cleaner. You know, I think Calvillo is is a very, very good fighter, and if you'd probably given me this line maybe a year ago, I would have gone for Calvillo. But I, look, it's it's relatively even. I think Calvillo is minus one thirty, Andre Lee plus one ten. But look, this is more than likely going to a decision, um, I would think. And I think Andrea Lee is, is very good at winning decisions. She lands lots of shots. She absorbs shots very well, which is very important, obviously, these days. And, and every day, I suppose, with um, uh, with, with the way judging works, it's your, your ability to absorb shots is almost as, as important as your ability to, to land shots in an, uh, you know, in an impactful way. So um, I think... That is a very big key for Andrea Lee here. I think. Look, I think it's going to be a back and forth. I wouldn't surprise. Wouldn't be surprised if it was a split decision, twenty nine, twenty eight, either way. I just, I just like her her lint as well. I like her, I like her clean boxing prowess, and I think Calvillo. Um, may, may, maybe this is unfair, but I think more things have to go right for Calvillo than Lee. You know, Lee has a more structured um, kind of technical and tactical game. And I'm not saying that Calvillo isn't, but I think, I think it, look, it's a little bit like Yaya Rodriguez against Holloway. If something lands, if something big lands, if something goes very right for him, it'll go very right for him. And I think it'll be the same for Calvillo. If something goes very right for her, it'll go very right for her. But to, to be a minus 130 on that... Now, maybe I'm calling it wrong. Maybe, I'm, and look, I've been wrong before. I'll, I'll be wrong again. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I, I just like the, um, I like the straight up fighting, boxing, uh, kickboxing ability of Andrea Lee. She's not the fastest starter in the world, so maybe that'll be an issue here. But I could see her winning the uh, the second and third rounds and, and taking the decision here. Uh, plus one ten. I'm, uh, I'm definitely going for that. Right. Uh, so those are my uh, my four bets. I'll, I will recap them again at the end. But my flyer for the weekend. Look, there was a there was a few of them. There was a few of them I was looking at. I'll get to the main event in Bellator in a second. I I had to leave my bias aside. I couldn't I couldn't do it. Um, but I'm I am going for and I, I I'll talk a little bit more about the other Bellator flyers I was looking at in a second. But I am going for Raheem Cleveland. 
uh, to beat Steve Mowry as my fire of the week, and that is uh, plus four uh, seven five here. Um, I was just look. I watched a, a good bit of both of these guys uh, preparing for my preview, and I think they're very similar fighters. They're ver both very very good fighters. Now I I understand why Mowry is a big favorite. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt big heavyweight he's he's kind of ranked he's flying under the radar a little bit as ranked heavyweight in bellator but i think he deserves it you know i think he he he's a a big tall athletic guy who boxes well on the inside and doesn't take many shots and if you have that at heavyweight just what i said there it's almost enough but ricky in cleveland i don't think he's as like staunch and stationary as a fighter he's more loose but he's big as well fighting out of the southpaw stance can hit hard you know, doesn't win all these fights, doesn't lose all these. One of those ones, he is a, a in a, I suppose the people in America, a five hundred fighter or something like that ish, um, or maybe even a seven fifty fighter. I don't know, whatever it would be. But he's a good fighter, and I was very impressed watching some of his fights uh, coming in this weekend. And I honestly, if I was making the line for this, I would probably have him, you know, plus two fifty maybe maybe plus 300 the fact that you can get him for plus 475 i think is i think is a big price and you know almost five that'll probably be five to one by fight night i would say maybe hold off on that um because i'd say it will go in that direction let me just look if, if it shows it here yeah it is it's going up all the time he started off at plus 375 here on uh, on best fight odds and he's up to plus uh, 475 now so i would hold off until friday night to bet on that um and you know couple of quid throw it on it and and you might uh you might get five times your your money at the end of the day and that that is definitely my fire because it's one of those well look at the heavyweight fight it's a guy who hits hard it's a guy against a guy who is you know relatively unproven yet but it looks a good prospect looks a good looks a good fighter but it's a good test for him as well uh and more even matchup than that price would suggest so yeah that's my fire of the week uh it is rakeem cleveland to beat steve maury um look the other options for Flyers of the Week, I, I was looking, I was thinking about Justin Gonzalez against Aaron Pico. Look, we've seen Aaron Pico beaten before and, uh, you know, in, in different sorts of ways. But Gonzalez is only plus 250, plus 280. Now, that is the sort of line I was expecting for the, the cleveland Maori fight. You know, I thought people would have gone and kind of watched him and, and seen the uh, the quality. But Justin Gonzalez is a very, very good fighter. Now, Pico should be favoured. I 100% agree with that. No shadow of a doubt about that. But... I think uh, Justin Gonzalez deserves a bit of respect, and I think that price is a pretty respectful price. So, you know, I couldn't give two, what is he, top plus 250, plus 280 here in some places. I couldn't give that as a flyer, but uh, I think he has a chance. Definitely picking Pico. Pico is definitely my pick uh, for this one, but um, yeah, I think that would be a very good fight. And if people don't know Gonzalez, I would, uh, you know, I think there's a few of his fights on YouTube where I was watching him somewhere, maybe on, was on Fight Pass. I think he fought in LFA or anything, but anyway, his fights are around, and. Um, you know he is a he is a good fighter. Um, the other fight on the undercard that I was looking at as well was uh, Arlene Blinko against Pam Sorensen. Um, this was another one where the line surprised me a little bit, even though I kind of agree with it. <laughs> you know, uh, Blinko is minus four hundred some places, minus minus three fifty to minus four hundred kind of price, uh, and Pam Sorensen is around the plus two ninety to plus three hundred sort of price as well. Now, I think Blinko will win. I think it's it's right. Uh, but Pam Sarnison has good takedowns. If she gets inside, she can get you to the ground. And she can win fights that way. She absolutely can. Uh, but I just think Blinko's um, boxing will be too much. At that price, though, I wouldn't take her. I even seen one place here, she's minus 450. So that's that's absolutely huge. I definitely wouldn't be taking her at that price because Sorensen has ways to win, but I also wouldn't be taking Sorensen at plus 300. So I'll, I will uh, definitely leave that uh, that fight to one side. But the main event, Chris Cyborg, Justino against Sinead Kavanagh. Um, all the props and bets aren't out here yet, but what we do have is in some places, Sinead Kavanagh is plus 1300 plus 1400 um chris cyborg anywhere from minus 2000 to minus 3300 an absolutely massive favorite now look cyborg with a throughout her career has done enough to be a favorite and and does absolutely deserves this but let me get biased there for a second right shanae kavanagh has a chance shanae kavanagh is a five-time irish amateur boxing champion she can box she is a good good striker and if Chris Cyborg allows this to be a striking match. 
Sinead Kavanaugh has a chance. Now, if she allows it to be a striker match, Chris Cyborg could still win. She probably will still win. You know, absolutely. But Sinead Kavanaugh has a chance if that happens. And I don't think... I don't think... Um, she's to be completely written off as a complete no-hopper, right? I don't think that. Now, do I think Cyborg will win? Do, if if this fight happened 100 times, will I pick her 99 by 9 times? Yeah, I probably would. But uh, Sinead Kavanaugh is a good fighter. Her record, what is it, 7-4? and four. I don't think that is reflective of her actual career. There was a cut in there. There was two absolute robberies in there as well. So she could easily be, what, 10-1 and one or, or you know, 9-2 and two or something like that. So her record is, is better than it shows. And if it was, I think, that record, I think people might be... Um, might be a little bit different on this fight, but um, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, um, I think Sinead will give a good account of herself. And if you're feeling crazy, uh, she, look, she's plus fourteen hundred in some places. Wait for wait for the knockout bet to come out. That will probably be what plus what, plus sixteen seventeen hundred. Let, let's wait and see for that to come out. But if a, you know a flyer, if you want a pure flyer to throw a couple of quid on. You know that would be the that would be the worst one in the world to see uh, to see what Shanae does, but uh, I'm really looking forward uh, to that fight. And look, it's always fun to see uh, to see Chris Cyborg fight as well, and, and as I said, uh, a, a country woman to fight for uh, for a title is always fun as well. As we saw, um, you know, a countryman and Peter Creedy uh, at the weekend. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, a few of the other bets here. There's look. As I mentioned on the on the preview, there's lots of kind of the up and coming uh, Bellator prospects on this as well. So there's lots of heavy favorites. Um, Fernando's minus one thousand favorite. Uh, so is uh, Fozzie in this one. Cody Laws minus three thousand. Valerada minus four fifty. You know Taylor Turner. She is a win over uh, Heather Hardy. So if you if you like her plus three seventy five, I see she is there. That's not the worst in the world. Uh, Newman is minus eight hundred as well. So nothing really much worth betting on there uh, at all and in in the ufc card uh big ben rothwell is a favorite minus 145 against uh, marcos rogerio you know uh, big ben i <laughs> he's another one i kind of avoid sometimes because i bet against him before and i bet it for him before and he lets me down on both of them so i think i'll, I'll avoid him but um yeah kyle Dawkins against uh, roman delizza uh, Julio Arce is uh, just uh, just a plus one ten favorite over uh, Song Yudong, who's minus one thirty. I think that's just about right as well. Uh, Chaos Williams is plus twenty one twenty five over against uh, Miguel Baez, at minus one forty five. I probably would have flipped that. I probably would have had that the other way, but you know, close one as well. Big fan of Sean Woods, and he's minus one uh, three thirty five against Colin Algan. 260. Then Courtney Case is on this card as well, minus 225 against uh, Liana Joja, plus 185. Mark Chikesi, very, very good fighter out of uh, out of England, minus 195 against Rafael Alves, plus 165. Honestly, as someone who has kind of been a big fan of Chikesi for a long time, and we did uh, over in Severe, my, my friend uh, Graham did a, a bit of a documentary on him, and we've kind of a soft spot for him over there. Um, uh, I was expecting this to be a little bit closer, but Jacasey, like Jacasey, could be one of the best prospects in the world. I really mean that. He has all the things in the world. You know, he has the striking, the wrestling, everything. But it's just putting it all together and reaching that level. I think. Uh, but he's one of these lads like Dos Anjos. He could come out of nowhere. You know, I think I really think he's one of those. Uh, but Alves is a tough matchup, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Kennedy and Juku. Uh, he's a uh, he's minus one. Uh, 105 in some places, plus 100, plus 110 in other places as well. Um, and that Ung Jung is uh, is around to say a minus 115 is a little bit of a favorite. So, uh, back in against Kennedy, he's a madman, so I, I wouldn't be doing that at all. But, uh, look, looking forward to these cards anyway. I'll recap my bets quickly. Uh, Holloway inside the distance, plus 130. Joel Alvarez to win straight up, plus 210. Tyrell Fortune to win a minus 175. Andre Lee is plus 110, and in my flyer of the week, Racky in Cleveland, plus 475 to win at Bellator. Thank you to everyone for watching. My name is Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com. I'll see you all next time. Good luck.